Fatia and her nephew, Saeed, have arrived in London from Belgium. They are waiting for an evening panel discussion organised by IOHR with hopes of getting answers on the fate of Fatia's six grandchildren, daughter and daughter-in-law, who left Belgium for Syria for the second time in 2015. Fatia's son, Nouradine, daughter, Bouchera, and daughter and son-in-law flew to Syria between 2013 and 2014, influenced by Salafist organisation Sharia for Belgium and groomed to join fighters in Syria. A year later, her son died. Fatia's daughter and daughter-in-law managed to return to Belgium at the end of 2014 with their children, which left Fatia relieved that her loved ones are now in a safe place. But this did not last for very long. She was on holiday in Tunisia when her daughter sent her a text message to tell her that they went back to Syria mid-2015. Fatia had indeed requested an invitation letter from IOHR to be able to come to the panel in London. The world is grappling with how to deal with hundreds of children of ISIS fighters and other militant groups. Those captured are hoping to return home as the terrorists are defeated in Syria and Iraq. In the UK, Shamima Begum, a British girl who joined ISIS at the age of 15, was refused entry back into the UK with her baby. A saga that has paved the way for this ongoing debate. Fatia tells me that her daughter and daughter-in-law's experience in Belgium after their return left them feeling unwelcome, estranged, and led them to go back to Syria. أي سويتر اللي كان مشي ما كيف غش يفوت عليها طبعاً مشي ديت هال بروكسان سويتر الكبير تناك ده بزنا أنا طويل هو غير قرار قرار بنتي بلي تنضرب في سوريا ما بغش يحديها جري عليها ما بغش ي ما بغش يفوت عليها جيت بس نكري لهم ندي لهم الدار الدار بوحدهم بس نكري لهم حتى واحد ما بغى يكري لهم the <laughs> Fatia has collaborated with the Belgian authorities since the beginning of her children's move to Syria, hoping that they could do something to save the mothers and children from dying like her son. وانا ولدي ثلاث ايام ما كلمنيش وانا قلبي حاس بلي كاينه شي حاجه واتصلت ببنتي وراجل بنتي كنقول لهم نوردين وين وين نوردين كتقولي ماما انا البارح عاد كنت معاك كنقول لها كيفاش نوردين ثلاث ايام ما هضرتش معاه ما ماشي نورمال عاش هو كل نهار كان كيدير لي التليفون قالت لي صافي غادي نتصل بيه وغادي نشوف ما هذا هذيك النهار ما كنتش مزيانه بحال حاسه شي حاجه شي حاجه كاينه المهم حنا كنا مجموعين عند كنا مجموعين عند عند اختي كامل العائله كاملين ومع الوقت المغرب بنتي كت كتصوني لي كنقول لي ماما انت انت فينك قلت لها انا عند خالتك نتي انت بوحدك قلت لها انا ماشي بوحدي معايا راجلي معايا اختي معايا كلشي في عائله تماك قلت لها خوك فين قالت لي اكيد انت ماشي بوحدك قلت لها خوك فين فهمت حسيت 
The British and European public have expressed little sympathy for the families of fighters, with fears of more attacks if suspected militants and their children are repatriated. Strong objections are held, especially against the children's mothers coming back. More than 150 Belgian children are believed to be in Syria and Iraq, but more than 30 of them have been localised in al Hol, al Raj, and Ain Isa camps in Syria, controlled by Kurdish forces. In December 2018, the Belgian court ruled that Fatih's grandchildren return with their mothers under the Children's Human Rights Convention, building Fatih's hopes that they will soon be back in her arms. Two months later, after strong opposition by the Belgian authorities, the court reversed the decision on the basis that the Belgian government had tense diplomatic relations in Syria. But the court has also ruled that under the rights of the child, the Belgian government should look after all Belgian children in war zones, a decision that leaves the sister-in-law and the children in a political limbo. It was now time for the panel. Sophia Majoub is of Child Focus, an NGO that deals with cases of missing and sexually exploited children in Belgium. She came to London to the panel with Fatia. She had been helping her with a case since 2018 amid a wave of calls for help from Belgian families whose children had travelled to or grandchildren were taken or abducted to Syria by the parents. They also deal with non-localised Belgian children in Syria and Iraq. I spoke to her ahead of the event to understand the current legal framework in Belgium for Fatia's case. The decision is, is really vague. The, the judge is talking about the international, co international Convention of the Rights of the Child. So the Belgian authority has an obligation towards his Belgian citizens, towards the Belgian children. But for the authorities, there's no uh, obligation. So what we try to do is uh, to show the urgency. We talk to Belgian authorities and they are saying to us that they are unrolling a plan, a concrete plan, to uh, get back all the uh, Belgian children who are localized in the camps in Syria, uh, but we don't see anything concrete. The Belgian authorities were really clear since the end of 2017, where they said the adults will not, we, will, we won't uh, do anything to get the adults back. So they always said children below 10 years of age are welcome to come back in Belgium. Uh, children uh, between 10 and 18 will be assessed case by case. Um, but for the adults, it's a no-go. So as an organization, uh, an NGO for the rights of the child, who, or Child Focus is an NGO, who, uh, who is an NGO for the rights of the child, so we know that it's really important that children aren't separated from their mothers or from their parents. Uh, on the other hand, it's really important and urgent that these children are uh, brought back to Belgium into safety. So uh, in an ideal world, of course, the mothers and the, the parents should um, join their children and, and get back in Belgium together. But if, with the no-go of the Belgian authorities, um, 
we understand that it, for us, uh, the children have, have to be central in the whole discussion. And for us, it's really important that these children come back to Belgium as quickly as possible. And then maybe afterwards, we can look into a reunifica reunification with the parents. Politically, Fatia's case and many others like her in Belgium and across Europe does not seem to offer a positive conclusion. Fatia believes public opinion seems to be above the law. Well, within the High Court, and something which we loosely call the inherent jurisdiction of the High Court, um, judges have the power to use something called wardship to put children under the protection of the High Court. And those are children who are either British children or children who have a connection with this country. Anyone can invoke this um, protection for the child. That protection requires that child to be brought back into the country immediately. So we use it a lot in child abduction cases. But this is an ideal situation in which a grandparent, a school teacher, a neighbor can actually use wardship and say to the government, uh, through the courts, you have no choice. You have to let this child back in. And it has to be done immediately. Fatia is scared that the Belgian government might strip her or her children of Belgian citizenship. She was born in Belgium, like her children and grandchildren. But she told me that it was not her choice to have dual nationality, as Belgium has always been their home. Such cases have already been surfacing in the UK, but Sood has also referred to how they should have been dealt with differently. There are people who are dual nationals, and the uh, Secretary of State is on safer ground with those, because clearly if the British nationality is removed, then they still have a fallback nationality. And to some extent, it's a cop-out because those people may have been raised in a European country or born um, and bred almost in this country and still perhaps not be entitled to nationality. Or if they have nationality, that nationality is being threatened because they have a fallback nationality. So ultimately, as I said, I see that as a cop-out because really those individuals, even if they have been groomed, are products of our society of the society that they were raised in. And their rehabilitation is really our responsibility, not somebody else's. As the panel went on, Fatia and Ashfaq seemed to be happy for this discussion to be taking place. Ashfaq had also lost his son from London in war in Syria, but had been fighting endlessly to have his three-year-old grandson Salman back in the UK. These are grandparents just trying to get their grandchildren to safety. And it's not about a national debate about, you know, changing governments and political wrangles. It's about children. And today is all about how do we rapidly open up the gates and get those children home.